Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Recording in progress. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye, Mike. <laughs> and I find it kind of funny. I had a good soundtrack. The movie did. It, it really did. Like, he's just, he's, he, he don't want to get out of the frame. He says, look at me, I'm a handsome boy. What do you want? I'm so handsome. They're all literally right next to me. All right, move, move, move. Mama's got to work. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. I'm not, that doesn't mean come on the other side. Okay, all right. He says, yes, it does. <laughs> Look at his face. He was, what's going on? All right. Um, hi and hello. Let's see. Are you ready to go? go to yes. It? Okay, yeah. Do we need to like right, make cheese. it a quickie one? No, right. I'm fine. Okay. Stop chewing on that. That's not for kitties to eat. She's... Chewing up a pencil case of mine. A pencil case? Yeah. Pencil case, pencil case. Yeah, got it. Like a trapper keeper? Yeah, like my students it got plastic? it for me. No, it it's like cotton. It's like yeah. a fake leather. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I see. Cute. But yeah, maybe she should have made that. Mm -hmm, well, I was going to say, let her eat whatever she now. wants. She's eating the erasers on the stop. You are a little demon kitty. Demon, okay. demon cat. A demon bunny. <clears throat> demon bunny. I'm going to call you Frank. Sinatra. That was my, uh, Frank was the name of my second car. Oh, really? What mm -hmm. kind of car was it? It was a 97 Toyota 4Runner. It's a good car. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can picture that. Was it a family car? It was passed down from one of my best friend's family. They gave it to me because I was poor. I just looked it up. That's cute. Yeah, it's a cute car. Mm -hmm. Did you ever like go mudding in it or anything? No. It looks like you could. A lot yeah. of these are like lifted though. Was it lifted a little no. bit? It was like a normal car. Mm. Um, all right. <clears throat> Ancestors protect me. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to Boo Babe. Oh, wait, that's my part. Let's start over. <laughs> it's because I was distracted. I was trying to pull up the wiki at the same time. Okay. All right. Let me think. Hi. Hello, and welcome to Boo Babe. Boobays, that's right. We're your hosts. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And today we're here to talk to you about... Donnie Darko. Darkness and bunny rabbits named Frank. 
And time travel. And time travel. We do, we do, we do, we do. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Um, and lots and lots and lots of questions. Yes, I actually found a very good article that I think I want to read that explains a little bit of the time travel aspect. Uh, yes, because uh-huh. I, uh-huh. at the end of this, I've seen Donnie Darko before, not the director's cut, which speaking of which, guys, we're covering Donnie Darko's The Director's Cut from 2004. We found it on Peacock. Which we may or not may or may not have been forced to watch because it's the only version that only. they do have. Yeah, it was two hours and thirteen minutes long. So buckle up, it's gonna be a long one. Yeah, but uh, it was good, and apparently the director's cut really takes away a lot. I it's been so long. I think I watched Donnie Darko like in two thousand three or something. Yeah, like really young. It's that long I, ago. I don't remember it really, other than Frank. And Jake Gyllenhaal being in it. Yeah, um, I don't know at like nine that you could understand all the like the stuff that's happening in it because it's a lot of like really intellectual, like complex stuff going on. Yeah, exactly. And so and dark, dark humor. Yeah. And so at the end of this, I had to <laughs> I had to look up Donnie Darko explained <laughs> so I could no, understand. I, you. I mean, I kind of got the idea of what happened, but. It still was like, I was like, I guess this was this and I don't know, but it, I found yeah. a really good article that explains all the different, uh, like the tangent universe and stuff like that, that was explored in Miss uh, Roberta Sparrow's book. Yeah, this director's cut definitely had a lot more to it than what obviously the theatrical cut does because they take so much out of it um, for the theatrical cut. Um, that where it's more or less left for you to kind of put the puzzle together, like to infer things, like especially there are certain moments, like the scene where it shows him actually going to the school's basement and like then doing what he does to the water pipes, like in the theatrical cut, that's never shown. You're just kind of led to think like, oh, like, did he, did he not? We're pretty sure he did, but it never actually shows him actually doing it. So it's kind of more of this like air of like, um, is he actually committing these things or is like Frank or some other kind of force doing it? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I really enjoyed it watching the director's cut because it really actually explained everything way more or not explained because it still left me with questions, but it kind of like gave obviously more visuals. And then especially in the like um, connecting little chapter parts and all that kind of stuff where we saw more of Roberta's book because in the theatrical cut doesn't really have that. I think maybe it has one like thing, one cutaway to it, but it doesn't do it to where it's like kind of Each segmenting chapter. the movie. Yeah, yeah. into pieces. Um, but yeah, yeah. Overall, um, okay. it's going to be a, a deep dive. Do you want me to explain the tangent universe now before we get into it? Yeah, I think that would help to like. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. (laughs) For sure. You can find us on Instagram at bythecover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. We are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hey y'all, I'm April. Hi, I'm Caroline. And we have a new podcast for you. What's it called, Caroline? Uh, Bloody Happy Hour. It's going to be your new favorite guilty pleasure. We're going to talk about some bloody stuff. Serial killers. 
True crime. Rape. <laughs> Rapist. Why not join us? We'll have a good time. You literally never know. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Bloody happy hour. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay. Have a, mm-hmm, a good foundation. So this article is on literally donnydarko.org.uk. Literally, like literally. Literally donnydarko.org. Um, so it's a movie explanation on Don, and then the title of the website website is Donnie Darko: The Tangent Universe. So. Um, A little like key that it gives you is PU equals primary universe, the universe we exist in now. TU is the tangent universe, the parallel universe that most of the film is set in. And then Mm -hmm. POTT, the philosophy of time travel. So the philosophy of time travel states that time is usually a stable construct, but every now and then the fourth dimension gets corrupted. When this happens, it creates a TU, tangent universe, which is highly unstable and will only last a few weeks before it collapses in upon itself. There is a danger that when the TU collapses, it could cause a black hole capable of destroying the primary universe as well. This is what happens in the movie. There is a corruption in time, and at midnight on October 2nd, a TU, tangent universe, is created. The next 28 days are now set in this alternate reality. Shortly after the tangent universe starts, Frank wakes Donnie up and lures him out of the house. A few minutes later, a huge jet engine falls through and rip the rip in time and lands in Donnie's bedroom. It is important to remember that the tangent universe is not created by the jet engine or Frank waking Donnie up. We are already within the tangent universe when both these events occur. Unfortunately, we never find out what caused the tangent universe to begin with. It's just an unexplained phenomenon. And so then the artifact, according to the philosophy of time travel, when the tangent universe is created, an artifact will spontaneously appear. The artifact is the first sign of evidence that a tangent universe has been created and are always made from metal. In this case, the artifact is a giant jet engine. Um, where This is really long. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, but it does such a good job of explaining it that I was like, I just don't know how to synopsis. Like, make this shorter. I'm just going to read it word for word. (laughs) Where the artifact originally comes from is never disclosed. It was most likely created as the TU tangent universe was being formed. The tangent universe is an exact copy of the primary universe with one everything copied into it. During the copying process, there was a glitch and two jet engines were formed. The second engine has nowhere to go and as it has already exists, so it just dumped where the tangent universe began over Donnie's house. The artifact makes the tangent universe unstable. It can't handle having the anomaly of a duplicate object within it. In order for the tangent universe to unravel without forming a black hole, it must once again be an exact copy copy of the primary universe. By removing one of the duplicate jet engines, it will balance out the universe, allowing the tangent universe to collapse safely. The only way to remove the artifact is to send it through a portal into the primary universe. And so then it goes yeah. on to the, the living receiver. And so when a tangent universe occurs with an artifact, with an artifact, then a living receiver is also chosen. This person is chosen seemingly at random. And in this case, Donnie is the chosen one. As Donnie was the epicenter of the tangent universe, this is most likely why he was selected. The living receiver's mission is to guide the artifact, artifact out of the tangent universe. This person is usually usually blessed with some supernatural powers during their time in the tangent universe to help them with their quest. Some of these things include increased strength, mind control, the ability to conjure fire and water, and telekinesis. He uses strength to bury the axe into the school water pipe and solid bronze mascot, except for they said it was made of stone in the movie. Yeah. Um, he uses fire to burn Jim Cunningham's house down. He floods the school and constructs a time portal from water. And he uses telekinesis to rip the jet engine off the plane to send it through the time portal. He did so, all that. 
<clears throat> he did all that. Donnie is not aware of his responsibilities at first, though, and he doesn't even know that he's within a tangent universe. As his journey continues, he slowly starts to realize what is going on and what he must do. It goes on for a long time. Um, but if we go down to the end of the film, it yeah. has like the manipulated living, the insurance trap. It goes through each of the, each of the, stuff, the chapters. chapters. Yeah. And then so it says at the end of the film, we see a vortex appear over Donnie's house. It's the beginning of the tangent universe collapse and is centered over where it began. Donnie is aware of what he must do now. So he drives up the mountain for a better vantage point. The plane with the same jet engine has been manipulated to fly overhead at this exact time. Donnie rips the engine off using telekinesis, constructs a time portal from water, and guides the engine through it. We now see parts of the last 28 days rewinding as the tangent universe starts to unravel. The tangent universe has collapsed safely, and the primary universe that was on pause starts back up from when it stopped. We are now back in reality on October 2nd. The last 28 days never happened. Donnie wakes up in his bed laughing after dreaming some of the events within the tangent universe. He then goes back to sleep, seemingly content with life. Now the experience has seemingly brought him closer to God and he is no longer afraid to die. The jet engine Donnie sent through the time portal now falls onto his bedroom, killing him. Smash. It's nice yep. to see the movie, you guys. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> there is the movie literally in like two minutes. Roll credits. Um, there is the episode. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot because the movie is a lot. It, it, it taps into a lot of different elements. Um, Donnie himself actually, like you explaining all of that and him being the cause of all those things. I guess I didn't necessarily even think of him like being the person manipulating like the airplane and the jet engine and all of that i didn't think about yeah i, I, I just thought it me. was random happenstance yeah same same but Apparently, i guess it's one of those time loop things where it's kind of almost like it's almost always meant to happen i guess yeah and apparently he didn't need to even die it I was says about to say what with the final remarks on this, it says many people assume Donnie has to die. Otherwise, the tangent universe would start over again. From a scientific point of view, Donnie's death is not relevant at all. The corruption is already fixed before he dies. And if he got up and avoided death, then nothing would have changed. The philosophy of time travel tells us previous receivers who died after the artifact was returned, but we only hear about them because their death defies logic. Any receivers who escape death would go completely unnoticed. Hmm. And it's almost certain that Roberta Sparrow was a living receiver in a previous tangent universe. And that is how she came to write the philosophy of time travel. Uh, She survived her experience, proving that the receiver doesn't always have to die. But then she went crazy. Probably because nobody. Well, yeah. And I mean, that has to. Yeah. No one believing you and then having to live with those memories and like knowing all that and like having this Mm -hmm. ex it's like an existential crisis, like just knowing all of these extra details about life, like opening up parts of your brain and parts of the universe that were never meant to be discovered. Or were my job. They always are. Um, the, the whole, um, hmm. Yeah. So that is really sad if he didn't necessarily have to die, but, um, spoiler alert, he does end up dying. And so that means that everybody got to like, what if Gretchen still ends up dying? Then is that like his whole, like, you know what I mean? Like, I wonder what elements actually do still happen and what elements don't happen. You know what I mean? What was so far off from what should have been or could have been? I guess that's that's never that's should what it should have could have um, just left in the air for interpretation. Yeah, it does say in the dream section of this, even though the last 28 days never actually happened, some of the manipulated will be haunted in their Mm -hmm. dreams by the experiences within the tangent universe. There are bits of evidence to prove this. Frank touching his eye in the final montage and Gretchen waving to Donnie's mom proves that some of the characters have some knowledge of what happened within the lost world. Yeah. It's like almost like that deja vu probably type of feeling or. um, Apparently Jim Cunningham, we see him crying in the montage as he wakes up, clearly disgusted with himself. Apparently 10 days later, he clears out his child pornography dungeon, shoots himself on the 14th hole of the golf course and his dirty secret is never revealed. Who said that? 
How did that? Who? I don't know. That's according to this website, though. Did Donnie Darko. I don't know. Anyways, I know. I wonder um, where this fact comes from. Where his information comes? Because they from. don't. They don't or show that. Role. They do show him crying. Yes, they certainly do, uh, Mr. Patrick Swayze. Um, but yeah, uh, so I guess all that helps to kind of, if you're listening, if you haven't seen Donnie Darko, kind of makes sense of the, the type what of the time travel. Talked about <laughs> because time travel is different upon you know different movies and stuff but this is also kind of sounding like what maybe people are kind of familiar with um since they're it's kind of relevant right now the marvel universe whatever it sounds like the incursions and the multiverse kind of situation ish so Mm. kind of kind of similar to that in in terms of time travel um uh but also not as well there's so many this movie so um cerebral but um would you like to jump in or yeah, right. so I think, I think we're this film up. came out in 2001. It was directed mm-hmm. by Richard Kelly, starring oh, J.P. Really? Maggie Gyllenhaal. Yeah, it's really got such a huge, like, huge cast list. Like with Drew mm-hmm. Barrymore, uh, is it Jenna Malone? Jenna Malone. Mm-hmm. Seth Rogen was in it. He was a minor character, but was still in it. We even had Ashley Tisdale in it. Really? Yeah, no. she was she was the little girl. She was the little girl who was like, My sister wants to eat, can't stop eating or whatever. Can you tell me how to help her? Really? I was Ashley Tisdale. hmm You're lying to me. I am not. I was Ashley Tisdale. And then right after her was Jerry Trainer, the dude from um iCarly, who was Yeah, her brother. I did recognize uh-huh. him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's that was I Ashley didn't recognize Tisdale. her with brown hair. You know, I've seen Ashley Tisdale in real life. Oh really? Yeah, like she now performed. or a little bit, like a long time ago, or uh, it was like five years ago now. Oh, but okay. she performed at a market that I was at when I was in Vegas. That's cute. She was like the featured guest. I also saw JoJo at that market, and That's a good uh, show. I think it was was it Neo? Oh wow! Or was it Nelly? Mm, those are two very separate artists. Yeah, I can't remember which Very one different. I saw. Where you like bump into like, or was it like smooth like R and B? It wasn't Neo. It was Nelly. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 I think there's a, dif- <laughs> there's a difference in the in the groove. Um, we were but, bumped in. But yeah, that that was her. She's in there. Uh, but yes, can, the the list goes on and on. There's so many people. Um, you know, Captain yeah. Ross. Noah Wiles, Stu Stone, Debbie Chase, James Duvall, Mary McDonald. That's the lady who plays his mom. And she's been in like a lot of different things. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. Long um, cast list. And. Uh, I didn't recognize Jenna Malone from her. Uh, Cause she's got such a short blonde pixie in her IMDB like cover photo. Mm-hmm. Um or at least on the cast list that I looked up. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, she's from Pride and Prejudice. Whenever she popped up on the screen, because Pride and Prejudice is one of the 2000, the Keira Knightley version. As I say, there's my, like three of them, four of them. Has yeah. There. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I watch it um, at least once a year. I've never seen it. Oh my goodness. We'll have a movie night. Pride and Prejudice. Um, it's so good. But also, the, the film, book is so good. The 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 film is set in the eighties. By the way, it's set in nineteen eighty eight, um, right. and it follows our good friend Donnie Donnie Darko, who we already kind of come into it a little hot because he has like these problems at home, um, and I would say like um, behavioral problems, emotional problems. He's um, on medication and is seeing a therapist because he's had some. You know, he's kind of like a troubled youth. He's just kind of, he's done some things in the past. What did he say? He set a house, an abandoned house on fire. Yeah, he on burned it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of an accident it was. Yeah, it sounds like someone who's acting out, for sure. Yeah. Most certainly. Um, but He mentions he, that in, like, in stride. 
in the conversation too, oh, yeah. like barely bats an eye at it. He was like, yeah, one time I burned down this abandoned house. And, but did you know that <laughs> he like goes on to say something else? And I was like, damn, oh, yeah. why is he just admitted when... to burning down a house? Well, especially when he is <laughs> tone deaf. Cause she's like, yeah, my dad has emotional problems. He's like, I have emotional problems too. What kind does your <laughs> yeah. dad have? Yeah. And she's like, just admitted that her dad stabbed her mom. And he was like, and you, I'm like, you probably don't want to relate to this character right now. Yeah, not the best person to, uh, what you might call it, compare yourself to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we are opening the movie essentially um, with Donnie and this uh, kind of, he's on a hill. Is it a hill? A road? Hill road? Yeah. Cliff? A little, little cliff it. overlooking some mountain, like mountainous landscape. Um, it's a curve, a curve. Yeah. So it's got like that landscape type of picturesque background. And um, he is asleep there with his bike. Looking hella disheveled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, waking up. Waking get a little, up, yeah, coming to. Get that title card. The font. Um, <laughs> it's so funky looking. Over yeah, I was files. like... <laughs> none of the budget was put there we'll yeah they were like fine. it looked almost like papyrus <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it did didn't it uh, it was um, so bad but he ends up getting his bike we get some like music over this and he's Little riding synthy home. music uh-huh i like the music throughout the whole movie it's got some pretty good music and like the way it uses it as well yeah, um, the yeah. soundtrack is very good. I like it chose a lot of very popular songs. Yeah. And maybe they weren't as popular back then, but they're for sure popular now. And then we have um, him getting to his neighborhood and we have dad outside with the leaf blower sister who is played by his actual real life sister, um, Miss uh she played Mag her name's elizabeth maggie. in the yeah elizabeth, maggie yeah. in the mm -hmm. maggie in the real world elizabeth in the film yeah and, and then, he drives past a he rides past a sign that says middlesex halloween festival as well so you can as assume that we're in the month of october the and then we, we get lots of diegesis later yeah that lets us know we're for sure in the month of october yes um and then we have our uh, little sister, which her name was Samantha, and mom, mm -hmm. who's outside. Um, Reading Stephen King's It. Yep, and drinking some, uh, she's drinking wine, I believe. And then yeah, we she have, always has a wine glass in her hand. That's mm -hmm. the kind of mom I want to be. And then Donnie walks in, he has, we see the little sign on the fridge, that will, the little whiteboard that comes out later at different times through the film, and it's like, where's Donnie? Um, mm -hmm. and then we cut to dinner time. We're all having pizza. And, yeah, and we're having some good family political talk. Uh, which is always fun. Yeah. And cause some tension. <laughs> and then we have some tension because we have some tension between Elizabeth and dad because they are voting for different people. And then one of that, one of those names is Dukakis, right? Dukakis. Dukakis yeah. Dukakis. I, I, I just like that word. Dukakis. Dukakis. Oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and so then we have Elizabeth and Donnie kind of going at it because he said something insulting to her as a brother usually does to his sister. Um, and then she's like, well, you're such a fuck ass, right? Or he calls her a fuck ass. No. Yeah. And yeah, she he does. And then she says, yeah. you can suck a fuck. And he was yeah. like, how would one suck a fuck? And she was like, you want me to show you or tell you or something? And. They're so silly. Yeah. Yeah. And just like brother and sister. Um, and then uh, Samantha is like, what's the fuck ass? Yeah. And then everyone just kind of cackles. Um, but it's just kind of showing the dynamics of the household. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know. I kind of felt like that's a very normal family. You know, some parents who are kind of a little disconnected. And then we have our, you know, archetypal kids we have some man elizabeth who's like the type a order kid and then donnie's the like moody middle kid and then samantha's like the baby like i don't know what she is but she's 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 a baby and a star 
of uh, Sparkle Motion. Sparkle Motion. Um, and yeah, that's whenever we have them talking about, doesn't she say that, oh, Elizabeth brings up that Donnie's off his meds. He stopped taking his meds. Yes, and that mm-hmm. prompts mom to come into the room later, asking him where he goes at night and uh, asking why he doesn't take his medicine anymore. And he basically mm-hmm. just kind of brushes her off and it's like, leave, I'm reading, get out of here. Like, is that all you came in here to say kind of thing? And he gets her to go out of the room. And then as soon as she shuts the door, he calls her a nice heavy on the B bitch. Bitch. And then yeah, she says, she hears she, it. yeah, she pauses and is like, should I, should I not? And then she lets it go. Yeah. But she goes really into the, their room and it's like, our son just called me a bitch. And the dad's like, you're not a bitch. You're bitching, but you're not a bitch. <laughs> and I was like, hell yeah, dad. <laughs> For, uh, the dad was pretty cool in this film. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we have him, uh, Donnie, uh, taking his pills um, before going to bed. And then I think dad wakes up and goes to the living room and is watching the news. Um, and then we get a little time stamp, which we're going to start getting throughout the film. And it's October 2nd, 1988. And Donnie is wake uh, awoken up uh, by a voice telling him to wake up. Yep. Uh, and then we get this shot of an eye dilating, which we get multiple times throughout the film as well. Um, with And then there's like a shot of who we later come to know as Frank in the eye. And... Um, Then we flash back to Donnie kind of sleepwalking of sorts. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell if he was like super sleepwalking or if he was actually conscious or maybe a little bit like drifting in between both. both. Mm -hmm. It's giving both. Um, Definitely manipulated by something else. But like he doesn't he's not asleep because his eyes are open and he's like kind of like even like talking back like mumbling kind of like who are you like what is this yeah Um, but then we get to meet frank um and he tells him that the world will end in 28 days six hours 42 minutes and 12 seconds yep um sing that in the style of that one song from the one song from rent yeah 28 Day six hours, 42 minutes, 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have, uh, yeah, basically all of that. And he's like, uh, doesn't he ask? He's like, why? Like, why is it going to end? Um, yeah. And mm-hmm. then he, yeah, he says, he says, why? And every time he talks to Frank, too, he's got this kind of smirk on his face, mm. like almost like he knows what's going to happen slash yeah. he's he's like, like he's defying yeah he's got just like this little weird smirk on his face so weird so and, cute Sorry. yeah <laughs> and um but then that's when they he kind of just we stopped focusing on hmm, something popped up on my screen sorry porn no, i'm just kidding <laughs> it was porn no <laughs> um but that's when we stop focusing on donnie and we go back inside the house and we're seeing elizabeth coming home and then this big earthquake thing happens we don't know what it is yet but the whole house is shake like shaking and books are falling off the shelves everyone's awoken the chandelier is moving everybody's like wah and then elizabeth's like on the door like freaking out as one yeah yeah i would be too and then we're back with donnie waking on the green of a golf course uh to some guys who are like who's that and it's like oh that's donnie darko that's what's his darko's kid um and they're like hey you know like wake up you can't be sleeping on the golf course what you doing out here and he's just kind of like oh this is weird and then he had the a number of like the you know 28 days six hours yada 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 uh written down on his arm which i don't know what he wrote it with but okay Um, he had a pen in his hand oh did he okay Mm -hmm. my bad but 
behooved me. And then that's whenever they're like, okay, well, bye. Don't do this again. He leaves and ends up getting home. And that's when we see the aftermath of basically a jet engine plane fell into his bedroom. And since he wasn't there, he didn't die. Um, yep. And they're all like, oh my God, you're alive. Yeah. Everyone's happy. It's a good, <laughs> good thing. Yeah. Um, and then b- basically the, Whatever the FAA means, I just wrote the FAA was wanting to talk to them. And they set him up in a little hotel room for the night as they get everything sorted out and um, construction like on on the scene and stuff. Federal Aviation Administration. Ah, there we go. Federal Aviation Administration. Mm -hmm. They were there. And um, then we get some nice, fun, childish banter between the kids, like Donnie saying, she's like, uh, Samantha saying, I don't want to sleep with Donnie. He's stinky. And then he's Mm -hmm. like, when you fall asleep tonight, I'm going to fart in your face. (laughs) Such a brother. I know. I was like, and she's like, I'm telling mom. And then uh, Elizabeth's like, don't you dare go in that room. Mm -hmm. Um, And the parents are talking on the other side and they're talking about how like, you know, some old classmate had passed away going to prom. And they're like, oh, that could have been Donnie, you know. So they're yeah. definitely kind of very much counting their blessings that their kid is still alive. Um, and and he makes a comment mm-hmm. of somebody was watching over him. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, it was Frank, I guess. It was himself. Was yeah. it Donnie all along? I guess so. Um, and we're at the bus stop the next day. Yeah, we get some mean racist remarks. Yeah, um, did not age well. And no. we are uh, having his friends be like, oh, hey, sleepwalking again, bud. So like apparently his friends also already know about like some of his issues that he's had for in the past. Um, so he's definitely getting like painted as like the problem child. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's the one person at school that everybody's kind of like, oh, they have issues. <laughs> um, but which could be true. But like also it doesn't help when everybody's like, oh, they have issues. Um, and so then we have them all arriving at school. Hopping out of the emergency exit of the bus. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which um, I was like, that poor bus driver must have been so pissed. Like, that sets off a huge alarm. Maybe not back in the 80s. Maybe not. Yeah. I don't know if they had that as or were as invested in the safety of the children on the buses that back then. Yeah, um, probably not. They're all um, getting to the school. And we're, this is kind of like where we get this. Mm, not montage, montage. is it a montage kind of slow-mo I, yeah of just i would call it a montage of going yeah. through the kids in the hallway we see what's his name seth like doing literal coke in the hallway yep and, and uh, i guess the 80s yeah you're allowed Every, to do coke at school uh-huh they didn't know the harmful effects of it Coke was cocaine was just legal until like the nineteen uh, seventeen something, nineteen seventeen something, yeah, something like that, seventeen something, <laughs> <laughs> nineteen seventeen something. Um, and so we have uh, getting introduced to all of our like teachers and the cast the characters with like not necessarily using names, but you know we get to kind of see like what who the camera is focusing on. Um, yeah, we, we see Drew Barrymore. Drew fucking Barrymore. Fucking queen. I never really got her name in this film, so I just call her Drew. Oh, her name's Karen. Karen. Oh, yeah. that's easy to remember. Yeah, her name's Karen. Um, and Her then, last name was like Ollie Oxen Free or something. I don't know. I don't even remember, but I just called her Drew. So that's what we're going to Yeah, call I called her. her Drew too. It's too, like, I'm sorry that her name precedes her Karen like, Pomeroy. Oh, uh, is it Pomeroy? Pomeroy. Pa- Pomeroy. Pomeroy. It sounds like something I put in my hair. Yeah, um, like a pomade. Mm-hmm. And I love the music that's like over this montage as well as we're getting introduced to all the cast and stuff. And then after we, we also get to kind of see like the interaction between Mrs. Farmer and Drew and the other teachers, like, and how kind of like they're kind of shafty with each other like did you get that at all sorry say that one more time so like whenever we're having the small we see how like mrs farmer goes to the principal and this other teacher 
or it's Mr. Swayze, I think. Uh, oh yeah, she's Jim with Jim Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah, and they're very like you know, ooh, hi, and they're like smiles and you know shaking hands and stuff. But then whenever it comes to them bumping into Drew and the other teacher who are like the more progressive teachers, they're like very like cold and like don't even like acknowledge them. And I just oh, thought like, yeah, it was so cool how like with just those subtle like subtleties like you get to build on like okay already seeing the dynamics of what's happening between you know this uh ensemble yeah i would agree and so we have uh well, oh and then we get to get introduced to sparkle motion the stars of the actual movie literally um and they're doing their thing and doing the little dance and i don't know why i think this montage always makes me feel super like nostalgic and when i see them doing this that makes me feel like i was in the 80s for some reason (laughs) you're like i remember dancing with my friends on the schoolyard yeah literally high-fiving each other after like yeah so cute um and then we're in class what i did in the schoolyard was i created a did i ever tell you about kids uh kids in black kib that I made up. Mm-hmm. I was a you secret all organization. Blackface? No. Okay. <laughs> we were like men in black, but then also like kids next door. Oh, I, I okay. I like co- then, codenames kids next door. Yeah. And then we, I created like this whole obstacle course on the jungle gym that you had to like go through in order to pass, to be a part of, oh. to be a member. So it was elitist? Yeah. You, you had to. You had to the be able to best. do everything. Yeah. Very men in black. Top tier only. Um, no, that's really funny. That's cool. Did you like have a lot of friends join the group? Uh, was it- there was a few of us. Some of the t- sometimes the obstacle course was too hard for people. Did you go by numbers or did you go by names? Did you have secret code names? I feel like we did. I don't remember now, though. Wait, who was your favorite number from Code Names Kids Next Door? Um, Mine was number three. It, I feel like mine was five. I don't remember which one was number three. <laughs> I thought number three was the girl with the long, who loves stuffed animals. Or is she number five? Yeah, I think I like number five the most. Um, I, I need them to tell me who was each person but not like with pictures not who's gonna yeah i like number five the most that was the the sassy one okay gotcha yes i number three was the long yeah with the stuffed animals and the extra long sleeves yes of course he's probably who i would like most the most now number three and number four number four was always talking like this and wanted to fight somebody and then number one was just a badass yeah um and so well, was we who knows? Number two, he was the dude the little he was the dude with the glasses he was always the dude who was like the goggles like the fly the the flyer and like the getaway person and mm. uh, like the mechanical person what a um, good show bring it back yeah really good show um and then we have uh everybody's we're doing popcorn reading i guess essentially no not really we're just reading um and we have uh miss karen asking drew asking the class like you know what does this book mean and then like the one girl is like it means this and she's like well if you'd actually read the book you'd know that this happened so drew's a sassy teacher and then we have uh gretchen showing up our new exchange student from japan jk (laughs) yeah she shows up and she's like they put me in the wrong english class so and then uh karen's like basically sit where sit next to the boy you think is cutest and i guess she picks out donnie um because then she tells what's her face the girl who didn't read i didn't get her name but she tells her, like, get out of your seat, move. <laughs> Which is also Joni. 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 Her name's Joni. Um, also, though, a bit problematic. I guess yeah. nowadays that would be really cool. But uh, yeah, I've heard it being like, who picked the cutest boy? Like, and also how embarrassing. 
Yeah, I would have been like, I would have been like, <laughs> no. I would have been like, I'm a, le- I'm a lesbian. I watched this little video the other day of this little girl being like, I am a lesbian. And her mom was like, no, you're not. And she was <laughs> like, I have a girlfriend. And she was so adamant about being a lesbian. It was so funny. Lesbians are great. We love all of our lesbian listeners. Shout out to all the lesbians. Yeah. I hope and also non-lesbian them. people. No. Like, whatever you identify. Only oh, no? Lesbians. We're against non Okay. You've heard it here, folks. You guys, if you're not a lesbian, <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, the two lesbians are listening. <laughs> they're like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, that's not what we stand for! <laughs> Everyone um, else is like, well, shit. Um, but yes, we are now. Um, oh, yeah. I think we're now with dad and uh, Donnie, Donnie after school. The and, they, and they almost hit Lady uh, Grandma Beth. Yeah. Roberta mm-hmm. Sparrow. I refer to her as Sparrow most of the time. I refer to her as Roberta. Roberta. But I can refer, I can refer to her as Sparrow. We can also, I can also refer to her as Roberta. We'll figure it out. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Captain Sparrow. Um, and then we cut to, well, you know, they almost hit her. And then like, you know, Donnie goes to check on her and then she whispers something in his ear. Yeah, but we never hear what it is. And then we cut to therapy. And he's like, did I tell you I made a new friend? And <laughs> uh, she's like, imaginary or real? And he's like, imaginary. And as we tells, all do, yeah, goes on to tell her about Frank and says that he's a like six foot something rabbit. Which, like, if you're gonna make up an imaginary friend, go off, sis. That's pretty yeah. creative. I'm pretty sure my imaginary friend growing up was just my mom's dad, so I think it was a ghost in reality. <laughs> I think it was my dad, my yeah. grandpa coming back to visit me Spirit. because I would always talked to someone named tom which was my mom's dad's <clears throat> name and he died Wait. when she was 11 oh okay i was about to say you'd never met him no so i think he came back and spoke to me when i was a little kid and i scared off one of our babysitters she was like i will not watch your kids again <laughs> because was like i was sitting talking there talking ghost. yeah i was just sitting there talking to no one well or maybe you're just super creative do you remember those conversations? Like, do you remember that? No. Okay. You just know that they told you you were doing that. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, who knows? You are pretty into I like to think it was my grandpa that came back to. Yeah. Because my mom has another story about when I was born. The There was this like organ lady at the church who played the organ um but she had passed and no she collected organs she collected organs <laughs> and organ lady she uh she came to visit my mom once i was born after she had died that's like to say what just to like she just was st- sitting there looking at me oh that's cute yeah she was like my i was my mom was laying in bed and i was laying on her uh like chest as babies do and she said that this figure was just floating above the ceiling fan looking down at her and us that's kind of scary caitlin (laughs) it is like that's kind of terrifying (laughs) i don't know what part of that like you felt was endearing or like really oh so cute well, my mom always said that it was the organ lady coming back to visit me since I was since I was born after she died. <laughs> it's either I, I think you need to think about it that way because it's it's either that or demons. So yeah, I'm pretty. <laughs> let's go ahead and go with the uh, grandpa and nice sweet organ lady visiting you. Yeah. Um, and so we have um, him with the therapist and oh yeah, the Frank, all that stuff. But. Um, also, I never had an imaginary friend, so I don't know if like that just means I wasn't creative enough, or maybe I just didn't like. What have if enough just trauma. all imaginary friends are ghosts? Maybe that's what it is. But have you I ever don't watched know. "Don't Look Under the Bed," the Disney that's Channel movie? One of my favorite ones. It's such it's a good one of one. mine too. It's so good. 
Oh, maybe because it's horror adjacent. But um, yeah, it was such a good one. But that is sad that if you don't tend to your imaginary friend or like say bye to them correctly, they turn into the boogeyman's. Yeah. Of your life, which makes sense, honestly. That was really like that. Is that the or, is that the real origin of a boogeyman? I or don't know. The, or did Disney D, did Disney Channel ate that shit up and just come up with some like original fucking shit? I feel like they just came up with some original shit that was good. Because that's we'll have fire. to look it up. Mm. Yeah. Um, we'll get back to y'all. Um, and so that's whenever we have um them cutting back to now uh school. They're watching they're, a terrible movie about conquering fear. Fear and and the, love. We see a lot of really bad videos like this in this style, but it's very cheesy in that like um in, in, not infomercial, but like self help, I guess, type of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um it which reminded, are kind of only pertaining to this time frame, I feel like. Yeah. It reminded me kind of like the video just like shot in that style of mm -hmm. the video and get out whenever oh, they're yeah like actually taking the people in and like trying to their advert for it basically mm -hmm. yeah no yeah. it does give very that those vibes um and then we have uh donny um this is oh after this video and like we see all this dumb shit and he obviously like doesn't agree with it uh, it's nighttime and we're back at the house and he wakes up and we get this like kind of nighttime go in and out kind of sequence of him ending up grabbing an axe then heading to the school, getting to the basement, busting up some pipes. And we see like this imagery of like water and stuff go over the, the screen. Yeah. Um, and I don't know then, if we actually see him hit it yet. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We do. It's like so, it's like cut up through here. Yeah, and you're not get... sure what like he's hitting something, but mm -hmm. like I maybe just because I don't know what a water main looks like, I didn't put together that it was a water main until the school flooded, and yeah. then I was like, oh, that's what he hit. Um, I, I heard some noises that like were water sounding like a pipe sounding yeah there was definitely imagery of water rushing uh -huh. and stuff because we got another one of those like eyes dilating again and um there was like water rushing through the eyeball and stuff like that so you could in the like iris of the eyeball you could see mm -hmm. water rushing um and then it's the next day then, it's october 6th 1988 and it says 24 days remain we got our another diegesis. Um, I just wrote kids are so mean. I'm assuming they were being mean to Chen. Mm -hmm. um, They're all each really other. Fair. Yeah, they were so mean. And they were basically sitting there and then they find out school's closed because it flooded. And then that's Yay. when I wrote, oh, he hit the water line with an axe. Um and then uh, you, we flash to the school. We see the water just pouring out of the school. And then we have them going outside, kind of going around. And in front of their big statue, there's a axe in the head of this bulldog that's made of solid rock. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, he shouldn't be able to get an axe in the head of it. And then there's spray paint on the front of the, on the ground in front of it that says they made me do it. Yeah. But also how would even get up there to put the axe in there in the first place? Yeah. And like w w get enough footing to what, get what, enough strength? that yeah. strength to put the axe into its head. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, he is. Supernatural. I love how when the girls are at the bus stop and she's like, they said there were feces everywhere. And she's like, ew, what are feces? And she's like, baby mice. And she's like, aww. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. Uh, <laughs> and then Donnie ends up walking away, he ends up bumping into uh, Gretchen, who is getting um, harassed by these two assholes. Um, yeah, Seth Rogen's character. And his friend, who's actually named, named Seth, Seth in, the, yeah. in the film, 
Um, and she's like, actually, can you walk me home? And he's like, yeah, babe, I can do that. And so he ends up walking her home. And this is when we get the like interaction of her being like, oh, my dad's crazy. And he's like, me too. And she's like, oh, my dad tried to kill my mom. And he's like, oh, I set a place on fire. Burned down a house. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, he goes on about how he wants to be a writer or a painter. And then she says, Donnie Darko, what kind of name is that? Like, are you a superhero or something? And I was like, superhero? More like supervillain with that name. Honestly. It doesn't sound like anti-hero. a superhero. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't either to me. Then they get to her house and he's like, y- what does he say? You want to go together? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. And she's like, go where? And he's like, that's how we say like, like us, you want to be together. Like we're, we're going to go together. That's how we say it here. And I was like, this is the most awkward <laughs> and weirdest way to ask someone out ever. Yeah, for real. And also like, you didn't say just literally just basically me yeah and he's like you want to be boyfriend girlfriend exactly it's very like five-year-old you want to be boyfriend girlfriend i know we just met for the first time but like i love you i guess because she picked him out as the cutest boy yeah i guess so he's like i've got a chance with her yeah and probably thought this is a totally normal thing to do I don't know why I'm reading him because this is literally all my relationships. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm moving too fast. And then this is whenever we have uh, him now meeting the therapist again. And she's hypnotized him. And she wants to talk to him about a few things about Frank, I think, specifically. But then he starts to talk about, like, sex. And he gets on to like how he starts thinking, he thinks about sex all the time at school and he thinks about girls and like Christina Applegate. And then he starts to like almost masturbate in front of her, but she like snaps him out of it. Yeah, she clap, um, claps real fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, because that would have broken some law. Yeah. And then it was rough. Yeah. And he just, he kept saying it with such like gusto. He's like, I dream about fucking people. He's like, I just want to fuck. I just want to f- <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and I was like, God damn, sir. For real, though. Uh, I, I, I mean, he's what? Supposed to be 16 or something like in this film? Yeah. Like, so that's so, pretty normal yeah, for, for a it. teenage boy. And so All then. Day, yeah, I dream about sex. Sex, a, sex, 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 sex. Uh, reference. And then we come to. Oh, <laughs> and then we come to. What a reference. Um, Sorry. Then we segue to the police making the kids write on the chalkboard because they're trying to match the writing that was on the ground to the writing that is on the wall. Literally. Literally because they're trying to on the wall. Pin it on a student. Um, and Donnie gets confronted by a bully in the baño after he does his little thing up there, which honestly I thought like, oh, his handwriting does look kind of like the one from the from the ground like maybe except for the shit up a little bit the t on the they was a little more flourishy mm, okay so he switched it up enough but not well, knew. i mean not quite enough they still put a question mark next to his name and then we have uh him getting confronted by the bully seth in the uh bathroom because he's like hey i heard you told them it was me and he's like i haven't said anything and then he gets like basically jumped with a knife but then he just like punks him and then like leaves him there in the restroom yeah um which is not nice dude not nice at all um yeah it was i was like oh shit (laughs) we're yeah it escalated very quickly yeah he like put him in a chokehold and then was like no got a knife no no witnesses um and then we had like one wrong move and like a slip or something and someone could have like died died um and then died (laughs) died (laughs) died (laughs) dead (laughs) and then the guys no, now now the guys are talking about beer and pussy. Beer <laughs> and, and pussy. Smurf Smurfette, Smurfette especially. Smurfette's blue pussy, which she shouldn't have because they don't have any genitalias. Because they're asexual. They're asexuals, and she was created by Gargamel. Yeah, not not Papa Smurf. And Papa yeah. Smurf doesn't get off to the video of what Two Girls in One Cup. Yeah. It, and, sorry, my cat's attacking my foot right now. <laughs> your cat's a zombie? She's a zombie. She's coming for me. Pet cemetery. Oh, my God. Yeah, she just bit my foot. <laughs> Life imitates art. 
Now arts and Speaking pop culture which, and me. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I made I made a new fan of ours. I was at a brewery before someone the other to day. listen to our podcast. I did. At gunpoint. <laughs> I said, "Hey, <laughs> hey bitch." <laughs> I was telling her about Love Lady, and yeah, okay. she followed us, and I followed her back, and then I saw she was a big fan of horror, and I was like girl you gotta listen to this podcast <laughs> check these so guys good. out they are really good they are cool they're really cool they almost feel like my best friends and <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so jess if you're listening from i don't know if i should say where she works yeah I'm probably jeff not. jess <laughs> not jeff my bad jeff. Jeff. shout out jess from daytona beach this is uh jk i don't know where she's from but what if she ended up being from Daytona? Wow. And then we I'm just a soccer. sold her out. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be like, oh, my God, how do they know? Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> but anyways, we're having this really odd commentary on the Smurfs and Smurfette. Um, and then Donnie says the line, what's the point of living if you don't have a dick? And I was like, I agree. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said that too fast. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> Did I ever tell you, you about say? the time when I was a kid? And no, I think it's my past life. Me. My past oh, okay. life what coming happened? through. <clears throat> my mom was changing my brother. And I walked in. And I was like two or four. I don't remember which brother it was. Gotcha. But I said, I had one of those. It fell off. It'll grow back someday. <laughs> someday it will. It will. <laughs> so. Happen. I was like, I don't know if I'm either going to grow a penis, and I knew that at a young age, or if I uh, was, I think I was a boy in my past life. And then maybe I'll be a boy in my next life. Yeah, I get it. I mean, when I was younger, I was at a pool party with my sister and their friends, and I had to have been like seven or eight, I don't know. And like one of the teenage boys was like, or one of the girls, I don't know who asked me, they were like, or they said something about a tampon and I was like, a tampon? And they were like, you don't even know what a tampon is. And I was like, yeah, I do. It's what girls stick under their penis. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Literally. Just like, so like, couldn't like, I, that's what I believe, man. I was just like, yep, that's what girls put under their penis. I do under know what that penis. is. You fucking dumbasses. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, um. And so we have... Um, these boys having this whatever conversation and then they end up observing that miss farmer almost hits grandma death just like everyone almost hits grandma death and they make note of this because they're like there she goes like always back and forth people always always almost hitting her and checking the mail and there's never anything there um and then they also get to mention how they hate miss farmer which everybody apparently hates mrs farmer which i can see why um and then we have <clears throat> Donnie on the couch. We're hearing news of like more of the investigation that's going on with like the pipes at school and all that shit. Um, and then we cut to a parent teacher conference. Yeah, an emergency PTA meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then basically it's just a quick flash in the emergency PTA meeting, and then we uh flash back to Donnie taking his meds again, right? Yeah. And it's, it's flashing like in between the forth. PTA meeting, yeah, and Donnie taking his meds. And then we get a voiceover of Frank saying, don't worry, you got away with it. Mm -hmm. And then we get to see this sort of force field around Frank. Because mm -hmm. he's um, like trying to, like, touch him, but he can't. Yeah, he can't get through it. And then then we flash back to the PTA meeting, and we've got Miss Farmer saying, basically, that the book that... Miss Karen was making the kids read is the reason the school got flooded. Yeah. Um, because like in the book, yeah, in the book, they dealt with something by flooding the building and it was about destruction or a short story. Sorry. Um, but it was about destruction being the create like a different form of creation kind of thing. And they flooded the school or flooded the building and she's saying if we didn't teach this kind of stuff in our school then we wouldn't have this issue and yeah. everyone's kind of like okay miss farmer sit down even the principal is like can we discuss this at a separate time please like this is not the issue yeah right now yeah 
Um, and then that's whenever we have um, <clears throat> getting back to Frank and Donnie talking. And I think it's uh, Frank that asked him, like, do you believe in time travel? Yeah. Right? And he also says, I can do anything I want. And so can you. Yeah. Um, and he says, do you believe in time travel? Because Fr- uh, Donnie asked Frank, where did you come from? Okay. Uh, but then right as he asked that answer or asked that question, and says, do you believe in time travel? We get cock blocked by Sam, the little sister. She comes and in like, and like stops the conversation. Yeah. And I was like, damn it. I need to hear the end of that. But I mean, honestly, she was probably like, what the heck is he doing? My brother is yeah. crazy. Like, what do you do at that point? Oh, hello. Beep boop, bada dee dee doop dop doop. Beep, doop, da, dee, dee, doop, 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 doop. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call, but I don't oh. have to answer it. I'm just going to call it back in a bit. There we go. Okay. Um. And so, yeah, she's bitching about this book. All the t- parents and everybody's just like, yada, yada, yada. And then that's whenever we have, um, uh, I guess it's the, is it the next day and we're in class and Donnie's reading that poem? Yes. Pretty cryptic poem about Frank. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would be and, like slightly worried if someone read that. Oh yeah, in my I class, would I would be like, the fuck. Asking a lot more questions than just like who's Frank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what do you say? Did is this when he told them that he's, yeah, he's that like, he's oh yeah, a, he's a six foot bunny. Yeah. Yeah, that that would definitely cause concern. A call home, a call to the counselor to schedule like calling him out of class to ask some questions. Asking all them questions. Yeah. Some, yeah. But after all of that, uh, we get to the It's Time to Breathe video. And it's another video like we had earlier about fear um, and this and love. But this time it's, um, you know, basically telling them uh, to breathe, to awaken, something, something, yada, yada, yada. It's a bunch of mumbo jumbo by Jim because he's trying to sell his lifestyle, you know, coaching um stuff and we have miss farmer giving making them go through a fear and love assignment which is essentially putting an x next to either fear or love by uh according to whatever the prompt is that they're having to read um, yeah it's like a spectrum and they mm-hmm. have to place where their prompt I like, lands i like the way you say that can you say that again i don't know what i how did i say it spectrum you just spectrum. said it really <laughs> no, you didn't say it like that. Oh, I don't know how to say it again. Say it again. Thankfully, this is recorded. You can go back and listen to it a million times. Oh no! <laughs> I only can't. That one time, I can't recreate uh, it. I'll have to listen to it and cut it and like splice it up. Spectrum, All right. spectrum, 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 spectrum. Just listen to that on. It's repeat. just a really cool word, honestly. Spectrum, spectrum. Anyways, I'm sorry. Um, so that's, wow. Anyways, we'll talk about that off air. Um, and so that's whenever we have him telling Miss, this farmer, um, to shove it up her ass because she's basically trying to make him do this assignment. And he's trying to explain to her that like, you know, life, life is that simple. Life is not that simple. It's just, it's either fear or love. Like there are all these other type of factors and influences and, she is definitely not having it with him. And I love how when we're in the principal's office and we're like having explained what happened and she <laughs> she can't really necessarily explain it. And she's like, I'll say it. And she just like pops up from the side. It's funny. It was I funny. Like, and she was I, like, I told me to shove it up my arse. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then the dad laughs because obviously nobody likes he's her. He's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we have Rose and Mrs. Farmer talking after this. And Mrs. Farmer reads Rose down the fuck. Like, she just, like, gags her. Like, she just, like, tries to come for her and tell her, like, I just basically questioning your ability as a mother because of, I guess, what her ch- child has done or said. Yeah. yeah. And um, she was really spouting some nonsense. It was yeah. like, Jesus Christ, girl, like, get a grip. Um and then we have our next diegesis of October 10th, 1988. 20 days remain. 
Yes. And then it cuts to um, we're back at home and uh, Elizabeth is on the phone with her friend and she's talking about how um, Donnie told off Mrs. Farmer and the parents just like bought him new stuff and he's not even really in trouble, even though he did get suspended from school. Yeah. And after school activities for like six months. Yeah, it's kind of excessive, I feel like, for just telling someone to shove something up their ass. Yeah, I thought so, too. Um, And then we cut to October 10th, and we're talking to, um, I don't know a while, I don't know his character's name. Yeah, I just call him Teacher. Teacher, yeah, they're talking about um, time travel, and Donnie Darko is trying to ask him questions and stuff. ends up kind of touching on the philosophy of time travel by Roberta Sparrow. Cause he's like, look, it was written by someone who used to teach her just giving more background on her, how she used to be a nun then taught there. And then like ended up going reclusive. Um, and Donnie just can't necessarily believe that she would write something like this or even write something at all. And that's whenever we have, um, him, I think he's trying to talk to him more, right. About what's going on. And then he's like, um oh if we talk about this more i might lose my job is that this moment or a different moment it's a different moment different I think. moment okay yeah because um, they have two conversations my bad but yes yeah, so then he introduces him to that book and then donnie introduces his family to that book at dinner yes and we get chapter one the tangent universe which y'all know all about now because i wrote read the longest thing about it <laughs> but um basically he's explaining and he's like look I got this book today and guess who wrote it? And they're like, Roberta Sparrow. What? Grandma and death. Like, Grandma death. And his mom's like, I don't like that nickname. For real. Um, but then that's whenever we have um, her, him ending up with the therapist after that. And he tells her that Roberta Sparrow told her, him, that every living creature dies alone. Yep. Which is really and sad, but also true. Exactly. Yeah. So we finally get to figure out what she whispered to him. And then he says, basically, like, I don't want to be alone. And yeah. uh, I think that pretty much sums up their visit together there, right? Nothing yeah, else major does. happens. No. Uh-uh. And, and then, then well, one, because he also says the search for God is absurd if everyone dies alone. Yeah. Uh, Because I think touching on that, him bringing that up kind of touches on their last interaction where she starts to say, like, I don't think you're atheist. I think you're agnostic. But Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, But um, mom and and then we have our mom, uh, Miss Rose, with her friend uh, drinking some wine, looking at the like reconstruct renovations that are happening at the home. And she's uh, the friend is talking to her about Jim Cunningham and how the mom needs to look into him. It's a Super Bowl. So the boys are watching the game. And Except for the Super Bowls in February, so yeah. So I guess I don't. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it used to not back be in, in February. The day. Yeah, maybe it used yeah. to be back in the day. Or maybe they were talking about like Super Bowl contenders. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's that true. That's true. They... That's true. That's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 So the Super Bowl in 1988 was on January. Yeah. So I think they were probably just talking about the contenders. Yeah. Because the one for the next year as well, let me see, 89 would be, it was on January. Yeah. They've always been in January. So, um, or maybe they could have been watching like a rewind, a re. Oh yeah. They could have been watching a rerun. Yeah. Cause things used to be taped back in the day and stuff. So I don't know. Um, watching they, a good game. <laughs> Dad My has dad something that. come out of his stomach. Yeah, a big blob coming out of dad and then a big blob coming out of his sister when she rounds the corner. And then all of a sudden he's got one coming out of himself. And he's like, ooh, hee hee. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that's whenever we have Donnie getting up and following it. Yep. And where does he go? Upstairs. Upstairs. What does he find? A gun! A gun! That's right. Mm. Jamie's got a gun. Janie's got a gun. Janie's what is, got a gun. It, oh my god. <laughs> I just dropped my phone. Was that your gun? It was my gun. What were you going to ask? 
I wanted to see if that was the Janie's Got a Gun is the real name of that song. Okay. So the yeah. one in Not in, Another Teen Movie is Jamie. Not is is a different name, I think. I think her name is still I think her name is Jamie. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, so it just worked out really well. I think so. Don't mind me. Yeah, it is. Her name's Janie Briggs. Mm. With Chris Evans. Oh, he's so what hot. What a good movie. He is so hot in that movie. Yeah, he is. When they put the like whipped cream on his mm-hmm. when he puts it on his penis and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Anyways. <laughs> oh. Gay Awakening. Also, this yeah. movie was a gay awakening for me because Jake Gyllenhaal is like my first and it's still like a big crush for me. He's just so cute to me. I don't know why. He is. He is very cute. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I'm not even attracted to men. So there's that. And so <laughs> we um do with that information what you will. Um, and so that's whenever we have him now turning to October 18th. It's October 18th, and it's chapter two, Water and Metal, because now we're getting chapters because of the yeah, big we're bout. getting. Then, Chapters was... and days. And 12 days mm-hmm. are remaining now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 12 days of Christmas. And we've been going. Oh, 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 oh. And we've been going together for two weeks now. We have to kiss. Yes. And then she's like, no. There's a dude watching us over there. Yeah. She's like, there's this man and he's watching us. And Which then. That's true. He, yeah, puts out his little cigarette and walks away. But I was like, that's weird. Um, and then his get up was weird he yeah was wearing like a full-ass track suit like just like he was apart. i don't know maybe that's out. 80s maybe that's 80s i think it is um and then the parents are there at dinner and mom cracks the joke of i think we should get a divorce and i was like oh shit and Ooh. then they just both start laughing <laughs> and i was, was like cute. yeah i was like i hope that i can I, I would never take that. I would, I wow. would, ne- I was like, I would, I, I don't think I could ever in my life feel that secure that I could make that joke without it be- being like a problem or a fight. Yeah. Like, what? Um, yeah, they've got to. She really- delivered it with such conviction, too, that I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh shit, she means yeah. it. And then they were both Girl. like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's funny. And then we have Elizabeth and Donnie quaffing pumpkins. The quaffing pumpkins inside the house. And he coughs flank into his pumpkin. It's a bunny, a big bunny. It's and then bunny? we meet him with the therapist. And she says he's exhibiting traits of inability to cope. And he's got daylight hallucinations. And he's a bit schizo. Showing signs of paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and so she, she's causing a lot of concern to mom and dad. And like when mom is like, well, if you know, we think that medication is the way to go. And like you can tell, like, kind of the frown, the frailness in her voice is like she almost like wants to break down for sure. Yeah. And then I get so confused though, because at the end she's like, your medication was all placebo. And I was like, what? Yeah. Right. I was like, no, this man seriously needs to be on medication. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Maybe she just said that to. Or maybe that was a hallucination. Or maybe that was the like, maybe her saying that is like, uh, like, what's the word? Psycho or no, like. uh, Reverse mm. psychology. Yeah, kind of like that to make him think like, even though she was giving him like actual medication to make him think like, oh, I did that on my own. It wasn't actual medication, but it was the medication. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But she's trying to make him think like, no, like you can, like it was, it was, it was you all along. Um, and Power um, then we have, um, I can't sit still. I'm so sorry. Um, and then we have, I have to uh, sit still because I have no pants on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh that is funny i didn't feel like i had jeans on earlier and i was like i don't want to wear jeans to watch this movie and then i just didn't put pants back on you are so silly um and yeah so we have uh also while this is going on uh donnie's in the bathroom like he usually is in the mirror looking at frank and he's trying to like stab him through the glass but he can't stab him because once again there's a force field 
Yep. And um, then we get, yeah, he's just stabbing the force field and it's making, and it's going into that same eye that he's later going to shoot. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's like lighting up. It's like, I don't know. It's it's almost like he's, you know, kind of telling the future there. Um, breaking some sort of little, he's trying to break that tangent universe. Yeah. Um, and then we cut to but, Drew and uh, Karen, right? Yeah, and we get to... Uh, oh, my bad. No, Drew and uh, the teacher talking again. And then, yes. When do we get the chapter seven, the manipulated living? Is that next? I think it was probably before that or after that. I know I missed okay. one or two of them. Well, they also don't go in order, which really bothered me. Was No, I thought chapter four was the artifact in the living. Chapter four is the artifact in the living, but chapter seven is the manipulated living. Mm. So yeah, it goes one. one, two, seven, four, and then it goes back to like five, six, and then 12 or something like that. It does and something. Then, mm -hmm. It's all over the place. I paused it each time they came up to write it yeah, down. Yeah, no, I believe you. And so, um, no. because they also, they were going so fast. And then the, like, the words in the book that came after mm -hmm. it also were so fast that I was like, oh, I couldn't yeah. read them fast enough. So it's probably around this point um, that that happens. Um, and then... That's whenever we cut to after him having a because he's having a conversation with his teacher again, right? And that's when there. This is the moment whenever he's like, "I could lose my job." Oh no, I'm cutting again. My bad. My Who next note to? says, Why is "Now Jim to? Cunningham is giving a presentation." Yeah, he it's, is. Mm -hmm. That's my next note, but I also I, didn't write notes my, for everything. That's my note after whatever. For some reason, I'm like. True and teacher Don. Oh, I remember because this really perplexed me, which I didn't understand. Is we have a moment when Drew, Drew's character, and the other teacher, the guy teacher, uh, oh. who gave him the book, they're sitting there and they're for some reason being like Donnie, huh? Like, and I didn't, yeah, and never they're got like Donnie, yeah, like Donnie. <laughs> and I, I ne we never got like, I didn't know if they were like thinking like, like he did it or they i i don't know but I, they never yeah, answered no, and it they never confused circled back me to it. too that part i was like this must have been one of the deleted scenes is what i thought when i yeah saw that no one. most certainly like it or like they forgot to clean this part out because this was unnecessary uh, yeah so but yes now we're jim cunningham his show and um you know he's giving his whole spiel on selling his bullshit and um He's introducing that there's this guy that like used to um, basically his example of, uh, for his presentation is a person named Frank. So this starts to like now touch on to um, Donnie because he's like, well, wait, huh, Frank, that's weird. And then we have all these kids coming up. And this is where we have like Ashley Tisdale and Jerry Trainer, And um, then Donnie comes up. And him and Jim Cunningham start to go head to head, essentially. Yeah, because he was giving some bullshit answers. Mm -hmm. uh, in to all those honesty. Kids, yeah. Yeah. And then so Donnie basically comes up and is like, look, you, this is what you can do to fix your problem. You, this is what you can do to fix your problem. And you, this, yeah, you, this is what you can do to fix your problem, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. tells them each and then basically goes on to say that this man is the Antichrist. And he's like, this man's a crook. He's yeah. just out here spouting bullshit. It's so funny, too, that this town is so like, or they're trying to be so conservative or whatever, I guess. Or they're a lot like, um, it also, is it a private school? Do we I think? think so? Right. Okay. I so that's why it's giving such school. religious context to a lot of stuff it's just funny because they live in a town called middlesex like and just yeah. that like it's just that and let alone anything else but we have um yeah uh, basically donnie getting kicked out because he ends up rioting getting all the kids and the youth riled up and calling him an antichrist and so they take him out and um 
that's whenever we have him and Gretchen talking about Roberta Sparrow, I believe. Yeah, him he's and, mm-hmm. basically admitting that he's seeing stuff and says mm-hmm. that the book says some of the things that he's been seeing and that Frank is telling him to send her a letter. Yeah. Um, and then we got to go over to her property, I believe, to go see her. Yeah, but she's not there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and then it goes to the chapter four, the artifact in the living, I believe. Yes. Um, little segue, and then we cut to um, him this. talking. This fucking finally. <laughs> this is where. Fucking finally, he's talking to his teacher. You guys, listen here. He's talking to his teacher. His teacher is trying to give him like insight on this whole time travel stuff, and they're going kind of back and forth. And then Donnie's kind of touching on this whole like, oh, well, it kind of starts getting into like God theory territory. And the teacher's like, whoa, I, I got, I, I can't continue the conversation because if I do, I might lose my job. Um, yep, they get really philosophical. Yes. And so that's whenever we have Donnie being like, okay, okay, bet. I see. I see how, how I see. I got it. Um, and so then we cut to Drew in class um, and she's now talking to them about how she cannot teach them certain reading material and stuff and only other certain materials she can read to them or have them read in class. Yeah. Um, so now they're reading Watership Down. Yes. Um, and th- then we cut to chapter... Six. Six. The living the receiver. Living receiver. Yep. And then he's walking home from school, right? Mm-hmm. And he finds Jim's wallet on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we get Frank saying, Now you know where he lives. Mm-hmm. And um basically it's just you can tell that something it's setting not up. so great is gonna happen. Yeah, especially this is after we have we know that he had a gun, so it's just kind of yeah. like, eh. yeah, yeah. The whole time I'm like, what is he gonna do with that gun? Yeah, uh, and so then we go to oh, you know what's so weird? I just got the weirdest craving for like, you know, cafeteria like middle school cafeteria pizza. Oh yeah, that oh shit was my good. God. That just slapped. I don't know why. It just like. I don't know what that was. But anyways. Same with the mashed did. potatoes and chicken nuggets. on. Chicken oh, nuggets. Yes. Oh, and they would have actually, no. My favorite day was um, the day that they would do the chicken fried steak with the mashed the potatoes fingers. and the roll. Or the steak fingers type of situation. Yeah. Yes. And then I would make a sandwich out of that. Shit. Fuck. That's good. Okay, I'm sorry. I would cut um, my mashed potatoes into four and eat it in four bites. Fucking weird, Caitlin. That was weird. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would do a lot of weird stuff too with my food. I still do weird stuff with my food. Sometimes I like to put food on my body. You can't see my boobies, but I'm roping them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're weird. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's a compliment. Um, um, and so then we have <clears throat> um cutting to he's talking to his therapist again is he not yeah and he's denying finding the gun uh, oh that's right he's that's like right. yeah i followed this blob up to my parents room and then uh she she's was like, like oh what'd what you, did find? you find and he was like nothing and so little liar liar plants for hire and then that's whenever we have um him with miss gretchen and they're Oh, he does also mention, no, I guess, yeah, he's mentioning stuff about the book to the therapist, but that's kind of the same thing. Um, and about the orbs, him mentioning the orbs. But yes, IMGs, him and Ooh, Gretchen came up with this generators. project for babies so that way they can create memories at a younger age. Um, that quickly not me the whole time teachers. being like <laughs> being like yeah that's a good idea <laughs> right. and then the teacher came in and he was like did you not ever think that the babies need dark as a part of their like developmental stage and I was like oh <laughs> I didn't <laughs> yeah I didn't why would baby need I, darkness yeah baby needs baby needs pictures at all times of the day never sleep <laughs> light and vibrance I don't know I don't know but we do have Huh, that's interesting. Um, we have um, them going through that whole project or whatever, and then fucking Seth and Seth too are fucking assholes and like bring up to Gretchen like, be, 
oh, didn't your dad like stab your mom? Um, and it's just a really low blow. And she is like, you know, walks out of school. Donnie's chasing after her like, hey, I'm so sorry. And this apparently is the perfect moment for her to kiss him because, you know, he came to her like, you know, side and her moment of feeling distressed. And then they end up at the movies. Yeah. And they go see mm-hmm. the evil dead. The evil dead. And this is and whenever... then I was like, how is she already asleep at the beginning of the film? Oh, yeah, literally. With the knocking, literally. the chair knocking on the side of the thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's literally the very beginning of this film. How are she you asleep already? She's tired. Homegirl felt safe and comfy, maybe, next to yeah. her boy, her man. Um, and then Frank shows up. I would up. not feel safe next to <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly, Frank shows up and he's like, hey, bro, it's time. Dude, I have no eye. I'm going to take off my mask. I'm going to show you. And he's like, whoa, what happened to your eye? And he's like, have you ever seen a portal? And he like shows him a portal in the movie screen. And then that's whenever the Donnie's like, whoa. And then Frank is like, all right, it's time to burn it to the ground. Burn it all down. I love whenever he was like, why do you wear that stupid bunny suit? And then he was like, why do you wear that stupid man suit? Yeah. <laughs> that part cracked me up. Just put uh, that on a t-shirt. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so then he yeah. tells him to burn it to the, burn it to the ground. And so he just gets up, leaves fucking Gretchen there. And yep. he's like, be right back, babe. Um, BRB. And then the then we flash to the dance recital talent show happening. We've got Chen up on stage giving a lovely performance of Autumn Swan or something like that. Something like that, yeah. It was Autumn something. Dancing. Yeah, she did beautifully. She had nice lines in her arms. Oh, yeah, she was. She, she yeah, was she was really doing a good, good job. I felt so bad for her throughout the whole movie because everybody's such a fucking dick to her. Yeah, they are. For like no goddamn reason. Except for Donnie's actually. No, he yeah, that's true. Tries to stand up for her. So Yeah. yeah. Um but then yeah. we flash Yeah. Then we yeah. flash to uh doo, 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 sparkle, sparkle motion. Motions. Yeah. They're my favorite. Donnie. And so they come up onto screen as Donnie breaks into Jim's house to burn it down. And there we got this flash of them dancing and all their sparkly movements, just they're like that. They're voguing the house down. They're death flipping. They're throwing stunts, aerials, acrobats, all of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> and um, then we're flashing in between that and then scenes of Jim's house going up in fire. And then with his big ass portrait of himself. Yeah, fucking weird. Yeah. And I guess I have a portrait of Andrew and I on our wall, <laughs> but That's it's of so our joy. butt. That's a joint picture, though. That's different. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like just a of singular yourself. photo of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then Donnie ends up back at the theater with Gretchen. He wakes her up just in time for the end of the movie. And I assume, I guess he didn't smell like fire. Oh, boy, um, has an alibi. Yeah. 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 Or gasoline, because he had gasoline with him. Exactly. I was like, he must have smelled. Yeah. He must have smelled. But, um, oh, well. She doesn't bring it up. That's a teenage boy. Yeah, stinky. Mm -hmm. And um, so then we basically get chapter 10, The Manipulated Dead, right? The Manipulated Dead. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And then we get, yeah, and Donnie's coming home and sitting with his dad on the back porch he's like look what the cat dragged in and and then he says dad i'm crazy i love how the dad is like son you're not crazy you know what's wrong with you is the rest of the world is bullshitters and they all know that you're smarter than them and what do we say to them fuck you fuck you that's right i love his dad he's like they're all full of shit so i love that i love that even though he knows what his kid's going through and his kid is probably feeling like all kinds of cuckoo. He's like, hey, no, don't say that. Don't say that about yourself. And then yeah. I love how the dad was like, like, I want a prequel. So that's like, no, I used to be crazy. I was crazy. You're not I know, crazy. yeah. I was <laughs> like, I wonder what he did. For real. Um, and then that's whenever we have um, 
Jim on the TV is getting arrested because apparently the fire to his house has led to uh, the police and finding a basement full of child pornography um, and apparently him being connected to like a kiddie porn type of ring. So that, and then I love how like Elizabeth's all like, well, like freaking out. And then Donnie's coming to watch. Uh, But then also the next day, um, fucking principal is firing uh karen drew barrymore from school from yeah. teaching because she's too progressive of course and we also got october 24th 1988 six days remain oh, yeah. but yeah firing her which was total bullshit because yeah she was teaching books and it's just so dumb educating yeah yeah and then we find out that sparkle motion is going to go to star search the tv show that was really popular at the time and then that's whenever the principal and Mrs. Farmer get news from the paper of what had happened with Mr. Jim Cunningham. Yep. And then basically after that, they analyzed Watership Down. Stuff had a big old talk on that. Um, mm-hmm. And it was really deep. I didn't yeah. write. I just wrote analyzing it's Watership of Down. A- about like why they should empathize and feel any type of sympathy for like a bunny or the animals. Bunny rabbits, yeah, because yeah. the rabbits are us and stuff like that. And um, but then we flash to the Mrs. Farmer going to their house, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's defending Jim, and uh, it's stupid, disgusting. Bro. Yeah, and then she, she drops this fucking comment. She was like, "I would never dream of asking you with all the other parents alone, <laughs> but none of them She's are available." So I she, was like, she just can't help herself from being shady, even in a time when she desperately needs Rose's help. Yeah, and you can if see I were Rose, Rose face, she was like, uh, <laughs> "The only thing, the only thing that Rose was thinking of is not like knocking an opportunity for her daughter, but like." I'm sure Rose almost wanted to be petty and be like, no, bitch, fuck off. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. Because then she goes and she says um, that her husband is in New York. And so I was like, who the fuck's going to watch? I forgot the I forgot Samantha was going with them, but I was like, who the fuck's going to watch the kids? And um, I mean, Elizabeth is old enough. She's after high school now. She's about to go to college. to Harvard. Yeah. But then fucking Miss Farmer says, sometimes I doubt your commitment to sparkle motion. And yeah, I was I know, just really. like... <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> fucking bitch. Fucking bitch. Fucking the audacity. Um, and so then this is where we cut to mom and Donnie kind of having this like... Fucking finally having a heartfelt moment because she's, you know, kind of telling him like, you know, Elizabeth's going to be in charge. I'm going to be gone. This, this, and that. That, that, and this. And then he's like, you know, what's it like having like a loony, you know, like a a crazy kid son? And she's just like, it's wonderful. It's amazing. And yeah, it was such a tender moment. Yeah, especially between them. And, you know, especially like he had called her bitch earlier in the film and like their relationship had already been pretty contentious, contentious or strained. Oh, it's sad to think that the last thing he said to his mom was calling her a bitch literally that's literally and that's why i feel like her reaction the next morning when she's out there smoking that cigarette like that i feel like that's why she's like that yeah as as like sad as she is probably they never got to have that moment where they got to like really connect again and so she literally he died without them having that moment so it was just like maybe she'll at least have that dream of the tangent universe Mm -hmm. of them talking about that to say hello same Hi, Tuki Buki. Love you. She's just like, what? Sorry, listeners. Same I just, like, audibly... She sniffed the mic, but everybody. she won't say meow. It's okay. She's Same shy. Meow. She's not getting paid. She's... She said no. Neither are we. <laughs> well. We're not kitty actors. She knows her business and she knows her business well. Yeah. Um, then we have a uh, cellar door, cellar door, cellar door, because this is whenever uh, 
Jake's character, Donnie, is talking to Miss Karen, and you know, she's explaining that she's gonna be leaving. They fired her. He's like, That's fucking bullshit. And she's like, I know. And then that's whenever she writes on the door on the chalkboard, you know, seller door, and she's like, What is that? And he's like, She's like, uh, Ronald McDonald, um, mm-hmm. the greatest poet, said that seller door is the most beautiful words ever put together. Yeah, he was a linguist, or er, mm-hmm. and he said that that was the, of all the combinations of the words and sounds and stuff that could be made in the English language. Cellar door was the, which I don't get because it doesn't not sound pretty. that beautiful to me. <laughs> but not to me either. Yeah, and then okay, no walk on the computer. Computer. Then we cut computer. back to the therapist. And they're talking again. She has him hypnotized. And this is whenever he's telling her that Frank is going to kill. Yep. And she's and like concerned. He admits to flooding the school and then he burned Jim's house down. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he says, I have to obey him or he'll be left all alone. And I won't be able to know his master plan. And then he's like, I have the power to build a time machine. And then Frank said, time's up. Time's up. Time to go. That's enough. Time to go. Mm-hmm. Time to get out of bed. And that's whenever she's like, um, okay, um, you're healed. You can stop taking your medication. You're not atheist, you're agnostic. You're doing great, sweetie. Goodbye. Yeah. Essentially. And agnostic people don't think that there's not a proof of a God, but they don't deny the possibility of an existence of a mm-hmm. God. Suki, I love you so much, but you and are very bad. October 29th. One day remains. And it's chapter nine, the insurance trap. Yes. And And Elizabeth got into Harvard. She got into H-A-R-B-A-I-R-D, Harvard. And now Donnie's like, we should throw a party. And she's like, you know what? Let's do it. So they end up throwing a party. Yes, we should. And it's supposed to not get too out of hand, but it ends up being a pretty significantly sized party. They also have a pretty big sized house. They do. Um, the huge house. And then um, we have um, Gretchen showing up to this party. And she's a little frazzled because apparently, like, drama. Her mom is missing. So, like, I love how, like, under, like, played this is. Like, yeah. her mom is missing. Like, and the she's house like, the was house ransacked. Is torn up. Yeah. And, and she's <laughs> just, like... And then they just like have sex. Yeah, and she's like, "This is the horniest ever I've ever been. I'm so turned on right now." Yeah, like, and I was like, "I would be." I guess distraught. everyone reacts to stuff differently. Maybe she needed the yeah. distraction. Maybe she um, did. And um, she also says the line, which I liked. She said, "I guess some people are just born with tragedy in their blood." Yeah. So, so melodramatic. I love it. Yeah, very much so. Um, and so then that's whenever we have them doing the do and then they're getting a phone call. He's getting a phone call from his mom talking about, you know, I'm going to we're going to take the red eye. The girls got third. We're going to have to do this and that. But we'll be back and find the morning at eight something in the morning. And then we have uh, like someone mentioning like, hey, where's Frank? Did where, have you all seen Frank? And they're like, oh, yeah, Frank went on a beer run. Uh, so we're getting a mention of someone named Frank. And then we are now, after making out and doing the do, probably, they're coming out and Donnie is seeing the goo come out of, is it the fridge or someone else? He's seeing it come from somewhere. He's seeing it come out of other people. And there was okay. a note on the fridge. yeah on the fridge that said Frank was here, went to get beer. And mm-hmm. we also got another diegesis of October 30th, six hours remaining. Yeah. And then um, we get the portal with the eye dilating again. And then this is when he's like, okay, fuck, we need to go see Sparrow because time like is running, running out. out of time. Yeah. yeah. And so they run over to Sparrow's house and they get there and they're, they stop in front of the cellar door and he's like, cellar door. So then they <laughs> open the cellar door and they're in there. Gretchen is not good at breaking into people's houses because she plays piano. And I was like, girl, you're making a lot of noise for someone who's not supposed to be in there. And then uh, then they get attacked by the bullies, by Seth and Seth. For no fucking reason. Also, what were they doing there? I know. I feel like they were. 
because that's dumb but anyways yes they end up attacking them and like it's really stupid because they're like oh my god and then like they're trying to be like mean to them and they have you know uh marty mcfly what's his name oh god donnie darko like on the ground and then they have Jim, uh, uh, Miss Gretchen. I thought you were meaning who plays Marty McFly. No, I'm <laughs> I was sorry. like, no, no, not Donnie Darko. <laughs> but Donnie's on the ground, and then they have uh, old girl, you know, on the ground as well, and they're being jerks, absolutely hateful. And yeah, they're the- about to cut his. He's like, I got a bigger knife this time, and he's mm-hmm. about to like cut his throat open. But there's and- a car driving at the same time coming this way. Yeah, and Seth Getting Rogen's closer character closer. is like, let's get the hell out of here this is not good and then seth is just like no i'm gonna keep doing this and then he gets up at the last second and then the car coming poor gretchen was in the middle of the road when she got thrown Mm -hmm. and this car sped right over her it happened so fast it happened so fast that i was like oh shit did they run her over yeah it's pretty graphic yeah it's because he's it's because Roberta Sparrow is out there and Frank they is swerved. Trying, to, trying to miss Roberta Sparrow. Yes. And yeah. it ends up hitting, ends up hitting Miss Scratchin. Uh, yeah. Run over her pretty bad. She's dead. Like on impact. She is dead. Yeah. Um, which does that, like, that happens, right? If you get ran over? Yeah. Do you die on impact? I guess. Or do you, uh, like, some people survive? Some I think people I think some people survive case, being hit like by case. cars. Yeah. Got it um that, but she was like on the ground and they like ran over her internal yeah. organs and stuff so they had to like she, squish her head lean probably probably just went Ooh. um and so yeah she's dead um frank gets out of the car and he's wearing his bunny suit and he's like what the heck like what's wrong with y'all why are you on the middle of the road but granted he didn't know what was going on and yeah he gets shot by freaking donnie darko Yep, eye. shoots him right in the eye. And that's yep. why we find out that's why his eye was like that. And then Smith Sparrow says, a storm is coming. You must hurry. Mm-hmm. And so he gets Gretchen, carries her back to his house, gets the keys. And we see this massive black thing in the sky. Yeah, it's like over a their house. Cloud. Something's happening. Yeah. And I guess then like he the just space like, time continuum is going to rip in half. Yeah, basically yeah. that tangent universe is breaking. Mm-hmm. And um he just takes Gretchen's dead body in the car with him, which I just found yeah. super weird. Weird, yeah. Very much so. I was like, ooh, that's so weird. <laughs> Especially like when he's later just staring at her. That was it's like, not like he it's not like he had any family to take her to. Yeah, that's true. But he mom was could have missing. taken her to the hospital or something. She dead. I know, but <laughs> I want to spend time with her. You're not yeah. telling me that it wouldn't be cute if Andrew just carried around your dead body for like a couple extra mm. days because he wanted to be with you. No. Because he loved you. There's so many stories of like people doing that, being obsessed and like keeping the body for years and years. And like, yeah, we should no. stuff you. Okay. <laughs> and we want you to look like taxidermy this. and then I'll sing on we'll command. Put googly eyes on you. We'll put a button in my chest and. On in my nipple. We'll give <laughs> you a BBL. To... Okay. Yeah. Do I really need one? No, you don't. I'm just saying. It sounds like fun. Even bigger. It's gonna be like an absurdly, like insanely, like obnoxiously, like not proportionate to your body BBL. Okay, love it. Yeah. And then buttons in my nipples to make me sing. Oh, 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 oh like Woody, and where you pull it, and there's like a drawstring, but it's yeah. Tassels tassels on my nipples mm. oh, i don't i don't get to be clothed in the afterlife i guess well no we could cut holes around oh i have tassels. a bra i have a like, bra like that girls. has the nipples cut out like mean girls it's a vintage bra yeah but it's like they're like actually sewn to have the Why? nipples that poke out for people to like breastfeed i don't know i just thought it was so weird i bought it <laughs> is it more like lingerie or is it a bra bra it's like a, it's kind of like lingerie. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That's it doesn't have like of, underwire or anything. For... Hmm. No, it's well, like yellow satin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think it's for breastfeeding. Okay. It's for something else feeding. Yeah. Um, and so 
uh, that's whenever we have um, him, yeah, with her, and he's laughing, and he's just kind of at the driving at the top of the cliff where we started at the beginning of the film, and he's watching the funnel, and like then sees the plane, which is apparently carrying his mom and sister, is the yeah. same plane that is a part of this like vortex of time loop um, that the engine comes off of. And, the twister hits them. Very yeah. scary. And then he ends up. He we got to count down to zero too, so we know that everything's going down right now. Yeah. And he says, "I'm going home." He says. And then we have him back in the car with Gretchen. He's just kind of looking just at her staring at her. And then time starts going back because now we're seeing all of the events that have happened in the film kind of reversing in this rewind type of situation style bit montage. And then we end up with Donnie back in the bed on the same night we were um, like 20 something days ago, whenever the engine crashed into his bedroom. Um, yep, And he's laughing from his dream that he just had, which yep. we talked about earlier. Yep. And he is in bed as that jet engine lands on his house. Which ultimately kills him. Yeah. And then we get chapter 12, Dreams. Yeah. And, and this is where I was like, I guess it all never happened. And then. Nope, they, it was. Yep. And it was just a different universe. Yeah. And. Uh, they and, roll out his body. Yeah, they're rolling out his body. We're getting, I imagine this must have been a pretty easy scene for Maggie to act, like imagining seeing your brother your being rolled out. Yeah. yeah, on a stretcher must have been like really hard for her, um, fake or not. And so she was doing a phenomenal job of acting there. And then yeah. everyone else was too. And mom's just sitting there like smoking a cigarette kind of, Mm -hmm. and probably shock um yeah. yeah and then also going off their last conversation was he called her a bitch and um then we have gretchen rolling up and mm -hmm. she's on her little bicycle and she's like what happened and the neighbor kid's like let me gossip to you real fast yeah for real the neighbor and kid's I love like, how, i got I love all how, the facts <laughs> and then i love how at the end like as a, like an eight-year-old he's just like i feel real bad for their family yeah <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, kiddo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she asked, "What was his name?" And he goes, "Donnie, Donnie Darko." And he was like, "Did you know her?" And Gretchen said, "No." And then she waves at his mom, and she waves back almost knowingly. And <laughs> we go to a black screen. We end the movie. And that is two thousand one. Yeah, so Donnie Darko, director's cut which is actually came out in 2004. That's a lot. It is. It was a very long movie. That's a lot of movie. Not a lot of in your face horror, but if you think about it, kind of very horror because imagine being in this situation. Yeah. Yikes. It's terrifying to me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The um, you know, imaginary bunny the whole like world's going to end kind of all of the horrors that also took place in this film as well as like more or less kind of the commentary of like what was going on with like the school and like uh the, the uh, jim cunningham's character and then um just like even the connection and like the interactions between the family and how um you know family dysfunction and like even not even that but like how people who do deal with like either mental illness or different types of um emotional disorders or imbalances and how that impacts a whole family in essence so there's like so many like really deep um and <laughs> sorry cerebral it's okay cerebral things happening in the film that just make you really kind of uh use your brain a bit uh, more than usual i feel like in other movies especially if it wasn't the director's cut because the theatrical cut cuts out quite a bit that leaves you kind of like piecing things together um yeah but overall um i are we jumping into the boo ratings yeah, I think so. I'm going to give it a five. A five? I would give it a five. 
I think that maybe he, the only qualm that I could give is like you could cut out maybe the problematic scenes. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe let's cut out. Maybe let's not... cut out the scenes where the boys are talking about the Smurfs and like vagina and pussy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe yeah. that isn't necessarily relevant to the whole storyline. Uh, or maybe or the even racist the racist comments and the, the racist comments all the times that they like were bullying and... uh, Chan, or even the moment like when he was about to like masturbate and stuff in front of his therapist, because that never even really like that doesn't necessarily even play in to necessarily the themes of the movie you know what i mean yeah um but overall it's a five um i think it's probably a little biased because like i saw this film a really really long time ago um it does have a cult and, following and i really liked it i don't there was something about it that even when i watch it to this today like it just makes me feel um like nostalgic for a time that I wasn't even alive for, if that makes mm, sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That feeling. And then um, I just think it's so well told and kind of like just really smart and really um, scratches my brain. I like all the characters. I like how it has so many like people that either went on to do really good things or had already been in like really prominent uh acting roles before this film but b- even though it has yeah, this so was, many well this was richard kelly's debut film i believe yeah. and then this was also one of jake gyllenhaal's first major roles oh yeah most certainly it was um right there kind of more towards the beginning um and then um like it was actually to see so many like big kind of celebrity names in a film that doesn't feel like a big celebrity movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it feels very like not like I your mean, blockbuster. Yeah, and I mean I'm sure the budget wasn't that big. It was a budget of four point five million, and the box office it made seven point five million. So it was lucrative. Like it made a profit, um, but. It just didn't feel like like a big movie, you know? It just felt very, like, a really well-told story um, that played on a lot of, like, science fiction elements. And I really liked how in this director's cut, we got all the, like, segues in the middle and, like, all these, like, really cool elemental type of, like, in- intermissions or, like, connections. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I think all the characters, all the actors did really good too. Like, I think everybody was so believable in their parts. Um, yeah, it almost felt almost like real life, real life, like found footage to me yeah. without the shakiness. Like, the acting was so believable that, yeah, it just felt like I was watching an everyday life of someone. Yeah, it, it really felt that way. Um, so, overall, because I could probably still go on and on over like, good things um i would say it's it's a five for me five out of five booze awesome ready for some fun facts yes at the rap party for the film seth rogan and jake gyllenhaal agreed that they had no idea what this movie was about (laughs) yeah i can see that yeah (laughs) same (laughs) especially when you're making something like this right and you don't get to really necessarily see all the like cutting room for thing and like the finished product you're just like shooting scenes probably out of order too yeah so like, you must be like what the fuck what the fuck is this movie yeah yeah seeing it all like having to watch it and then yeah um jake gyllenhaal uses a strategy of rarely blinking to enhance his psychotic creepiness as he is driven by frank mm. writer and director richard kelly came up with the idea for the future blobs while watching football John Madden used to use a telestrator where he'd diagram a pause video to show where the players were about to go moments before letting the tape roll. Kelly watched this while high and started to think about what would happen hypothetically if someone upstairs was doing that to humans. Fittingly enough, Donnie first notices the future blobs while watching football. That's funny. That's really cool. Filmed over a period of 28 days, which matches the length of the time depicted in the film. Short filming. That's really short. Yeah, it is. Less than a month. That is crazy. 
And they got this whole movie, a cult classic, made. Um, In February, essentially. The month of February. Yeah. In the movie theater scene, Richard Kelly originally intended to have Donnie and Gretchen going to see Chud. Um, however, there were problems with finding out who owned the rights to the movie. Finally, Sam Raimi came to the rescue by allowing Kelly to use and distort footage from the Evil Dead, free of charge. This scene That's was cool. filmed at the Aero Theater at... 1328 Montana Avenue, Santa Monica, California. The Arrow closed in 2003, but reopened in early 2005. That's my fun facts for Donnie Darko. Fun facts for Donnie Darko. Cute. Now we're ready for your boob Fun facts. Um, Yeah, I... Hated it. Yep. No. (laughs) No. No. Um, I originally was thinking of four to 4.5 is where I was. So mm-hmm. I think I'll stick with the 4.5, especially reading after the bam, bam, um, reading the stuff on the alternate universes and stuff like that, that mm-hmm. really the tangent universe and stuff that really helped me gain a better appreciation for the film. And just knowing it's basically like a whole other world is behind this film. And I think that's super cool. We all know that we're big fans of that here. Um, And so it was super interesting. Whoops. I accidentally hit something on my computer touchscreen and now it almost like shut everything down. That was bad. Um. But um, the, all the acting, again, super believable. It did feel like a found footage film, which we know is my favorite. So that I enjoyed uh, a lot. And then the storyline itself is really, really cool. It's very... <laughs> um, it's very confusing. But once yeah. you get to like actually understand all of it, it's super neat. And so I hope that our description at the beginning of this film, or not film, <laughs> um, what is this called? A podcast. Our podcast. Yeah, yeah our podcast, yeah. this thing we do. Um, I hope that the little information we gave you at the beginning helped open some doors and shed some light on things for y'all as well, because it did for me. And it really makes me want to delve into just the lore and everything behind Donnie Darko. And I completely understand why it has such a cult following. Mm -hmm. Um, It 110% deserves it. I think it's a phenomenal film. And I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And I I completely get why the hype is around it. Should I just give it a five two? No, you can give it a four point. Okay, I'll give it four point five. Yeah, and with my five, it makes it a four point eight five. It's still pretty high. That's still good. That's fine. And the ratings don't really necessarily matter, anyways. It really matters is how we feel about it now. Um, yeah. The journey that came. Through. The journey. The friends what that if we made. in a tangent universe? What if in a tangent universe? We're doing this podcast, but it's all rom-coms. That'd be something. I'd watch that. I love rom-coms. I like rom-coms too. Let's switch our genres up next year. Okay. All rom-coms. No longer all rom-coms. And instead of boobies, we are um, com hoes. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, wait. Com hoes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how close, how close that was to come hoes. My bad. <laughs> But it's also like, come hoes, like, come on hoes, like, come, come on hoes, come hoes. All right. Um, in the uh, comments on our next post or in our DMs, let us know, you guys, if y'all, how y'all feel about come hoes. Yeah. If we should do a spinoff podcast. <laughs> that, it made me then, think all this we'll time traveling made me think of uh, an anime I really like too, which I could easily do an anime podcast oh, um, called, it's actually a Chinese anime. And it's called Link Click, and it's so good. And it's about time traveling through photographs. Hmm. And it's really phenomenal. And all the opening and ending credit songs are hella good. Hella good soundtrack. I have them on a playlist. On my anime openings and endings playlist. 
What do you do when you listen to this playlist? And all I can think of is what would you do for a Klondike, for a Klondike bar? bar. <laughs> um, but yeah, you heard it here, you guys. We got a 5 and a 4.5. So that's a 4.85 for Donnie Darko's 2001's film, Donnie Darko. Bam. Bam. As always, we are being hosted by the lovely, lovely Rogue Media Network Studios. They always Thank take great care of, care of us. Yes. And then <laughs> uh, if you want to listen to us or any of the other amazing podcasts on this network, you can do so in one central place. And that is. At RogueMeanNetwork.com. And then if you want to listen to us, um, you can do so on a slew of podcasting platforms. But the biggest two would be. Spotify. And also Apple. But wherever you do listen, don't forget to. Rate, review, like, and subscribe. That's right, because that's the only way we can get ahead in this world. And if you do, like, please, word of mouth, tell your friends, listen, leave reviews. Reviews really do mean the whole world to us. I refresh it all the time to see if we get new ones. And um, Every so, day we're disappointed. I'm we just... are. <laughs> <laughs> so if... If you're listening and you haven't left a review yet, please go please. leave one and make sure it's a nice one. Please don't break our hearts. And um, if you want to let us know your thoughts on Donnie Darko and if our big old spiel at the beginning helped you understand this film a little bit more, you can reach out to us on our one social media platform, which is Instagram. And that is at... At Boo Bays Podcast. And that's at B-O-O-B-A-E-S because we're your Boo Bays, not your Boo Babes. That's right. And until next time, what are we covering next? We're in our month of sci-fi horror now. Sci-fi horror. So that means that next episode we should be covering drum roll, please. <laughs> I love our car drum roll. Um, okay, so it's either it's uh, honestly it's kind of we could either do Pandorum, The Invisible Man, or Prey. Oh, I want to do The Invisible Man. Then we're going to be doing The Invisible Man. Yay! I'm down. I, I like that one, actually. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, have you seen it yet? Uh, I think so. But What's I also a... might be getting it confused with something else. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Hollow maybe. Man? I guess we'll see when I watch it. True that. And um, but yes. we'll see next week. I'll be like, I've absolutely never fucking seen this movie. Or I'll be like, or oh, heard of it. Yeah. Um, but you guys, that's what we're doing. Invisible Man. So if you'd like to watch or uh, beforehand and then have your thoughts with us, then feel free to do so. We would love to also have you send in your thoughts as well. So that way we could read it out loud on the podcast if you even wanted to. So please do that as well. Yeah. Yes. That's all please. I have. And until next time, you guys. Bye, bays. Bye, bays. Oh my gosh. I'm like losing my mind. I just can't sit Why? still. I'm just like, because I've been sitting still for so long. Like, I'm like, I'm like, getting, you need to get up, go run like some fancy. errands. I was actually going to go to, I'm going to go to the gym after this because I wasn't able to go earlier. So I'm going to do that. But it's so funny. It's so funny because it's like my body has a lot of energy, but my mind doesn't at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 But I'm just going to keep moving this chair and bouncing it around. Did we text Mike? Yeah, I did. Leap. Leap flugen. What can you do for a Klondike bar? Oh, I'd do lots of things for a Klondike bar. Um, like what? Like murder. I love it. I stand it. For, I did that for uh, a what are they called? Choco tacos? No. Dilly bars. 
I haven't had a choco. I haven't had a choco taco in forever. But no, uh, the ice cream with the cone with the chocolate at the bottom, and it's like, oh it's yeah, a, drumstick. A drum, fucking stick, baby. Oh, I just have a cactus up my asshole for a drumstick. Prickly. I would do it. I hope yeah. they leave all that in. I hope so too. People need to know the real me. <laughs> the fans need to know. Did I have a worker come in tomorrow from eight to one or from nine to two? Nine to two. Ah, no, okay. how busy does it get early? Really busy? Eight to one. Honestly, no, honestly, I would. Honestly, I really kind of just doing her a favor honestly i don't necessarily really need her but she needs oh. some hours so i'm just kind of like okay <sighs> anyways all right boobay i'm gonna hop off okay i love you Are love you, you too gonna wait for mike i guess so or we could just end I it just, i think we just hop off okay we send him what time so we done now yeah um, all right, let me go over here. All right, well, you have a good rest of your evening. I also can't do this weekend, but we established that so the following weekend. Okay, yeah, that should work. I'll double check to make sure we don't have anything, but that should work. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yay. Okay, dokies. All right, I love you. Love you too. Happy birthday in person. Thank you. Not really in person, but it counts. I didn't get to tell you in person. It counts. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Ah. Uh. been a Rogue Media Network production.